Typing in Minecraft is painful. It's slow, clunky, and really not made for going fast. So I decided to fix this by building a machine that can figure out what word you're trying to type and suggest words to write after that based on what you're trying to write. If you type the word hello, it'll recognize that and prompt you to type world after that. This is the Redstone Predictive Keyboard. Now, while this thing might look very big and complicated, which isn't wrong, it's actually just a bunch of smaller and simpler systems that all interact with each other. For example, the keyboard. It's actually not a new design at all, and was actually originally intended for DaxOS V2, but that project never really came to fruition, so I never showed it off. It's a font-changing keyboard, which means that it can switch between uppercase and lowercase letters on the fly with a button over there, uh, and unlike DaxOS, both V1 and V2, it uses a 3 pixel wide per letter font instead of 5 pixels per letter, uh, which just makes it more space efficient. It has individual outputs for each key that you can press, including an extra output for whether or not the keyboard is capitalizing or not. All of this keyboard data is then given to the keyboard press thing to binary converter, which assigns a specific binary number to every key press. So A is 1 in binary, B is 2 in binary, and so on. It also has an extra sixth bit for capitalization, which allows the display to know the difference between both uppercase and lowercase letters, but the suggestions themselves don't care about capitalization. All of the key press data then goes through a bit of a small subsystem to extend all of the key press data to 4 ticks long instead of the observer's 1 tick output, which is actually a bit interesting in of itself, because unlike just connecting it into a 4 tick repeater, it has much less delay, as you can see if I slow down the game and then activate it, you can see it reaches the end instantly, but then does continue extending the data to 4 ticks. But after that, we get into some really complicated stuff. Here we go. So I just pulled off this section right here from the inside of the machine to show it off as a standalone system. What it does is it takes the binary input from the keyboard inputs and then chains them one after the other. So we get an actual like long chain of binary that is the word. You can see over here, every section here with these five copper bulbs, those copper bulbs right there are what store the binary. And right now, they can't be reached by this redstone dust, all these five lines, uh, all get the exact same signal. Like you can see over here, if I activate this one over here, every single one of these first lines all get power. But what it does, only one of these groups of five can be activated at once by these pistons over here. So what it does, when it receives an input, it puts the data into the copper bulbs, waits for these instant wire pistons to retract, then it retracts these pistons, extends these ones, so then the next group of five binary digits get put over here, and so on. This is fully modular to any infinite length. Right here it has nine sections, so it can recognize words up to nine letters long, which I figured you're probably not gonna bother typing out words longer than nine letters anyway, so that's probably fine, but you can do way, way longer if you want to. Upon pressing space, it both sends all of that data out to this section, which I will cover in a moment, uh, and it also clears all of the copper bulbs and resets the and also resets the pistons back to over here so then I can you can start typing another word. So this section right here is all one giant decoder. As you can see over here, okay, well this is a bad example. As you can see over here, there are a mix of redstone torches and repeaters, which are used to encode what you want the known words to be in binary. Every single row over here has combinations of redstone torches and repeaters, which are used to encode what you want the known word to be. So you can just write down in binary for each letter what you want the known word to be, and if you input it to 
the system over there and then press space to submit that to this decoder. If it if every single bit exactly matches power for a redstone torch, no power for a repeater, every single redstone torch that's powering this line will deactivate and no repeaters that aren't powering the line will activate. So this line will all deactivate and then power the next section over here that I will get into later. Oh yeah, and this decoder is also all modular, so you can expand it as far as you want. This time, expanding it further allows you to shove in more known words. Here it has the space for 24, which I'm not going to demonstrate all of them because that's still quite a few words, but you can expand this further to have it have more known words and more words that can give suggestions for. So later, this section right here is a giant block of redstone that I can simply not show off like this. Fortunately, this is also modular, so I can just take off one slice right here to a little bit more easily show off what is happening. Uh, this broke. It is no longer broken. So, what it does, uh, don't mind it floating, um, actually I should probably fix that. It powers all of these copper bulbs at the exact same time, which all power these lines all at the exact same time, which start giving updates to these note blocks. And you might recognize this form factor right here, 3 pixels wide, 5 pixels tall. It's the exact same form factor that I used for each letter on the keyboard. 5 pixels tall, 3 pixels wide. Directly connected to these note blocks are observers, which if I temporarily move this redstone line out of the way, you will see that they actually are in the shape of letters. You can see over here, it's a bit hard to tell, but this is a T, this is an H, this is an A, and this is a T, so this spells that. If I slow down the game slightly and then flick the lever to start activating all of the note blocks, you can see every observer start to activate in sequence. If I reconnect the wires to in front of the observers and then activate the lever again, you can see that all of this data is then fed onto these wires, where if I slow down the game even more, you can just barely make out the shape of here, this is an H right here, you can see it just puts down the letters one after the other on this wire. And then if you feed this data into an area of alternating repeaters and redstone dust, you can see that, at least from this side, once again, it's hard to see, but if you look at the lit redstone dust, you can see that it does actually write out that. But we don't want to have to freeze the game to show all of this. Fortunately, there is another way of pausing repeaters, which is with repeater locking. And if this mechanism kind of sounds familiar to you, that's because this is basically just a shift register used for displaying letters. Which, fun fact, is even what I used for displaying letters in DAXOS v1, and what I would have used for DAXOS v2 were I to have finished that project. And the only difference between this and the thing over there is that this over here is that, but stacked on top of itself so I can have two suggestions per word instead of one and then I just stacked it next to each other for one for each decoder output. By the way, for everyone in my comment section asking what mod I use to fly through walls like this, it's Axiom, you just have to turn on the note clip setting. You can see over here that when I activate one of these sections, all of the word data is put onto these lines like I showed before then it is put onto this main line, put onto this wire where it is transported over to the shift registers, which are then unlocked, the data is fed into them, and then right after the data finished being entered, they're relocked, so then they are shown to the user. It is a little bit more complicated than that, because we also need to store the length of the suggestions for later on. You can see over here, this redstone line goes to right over here, which is the last letter 
of the suggestion. And for this suggestion right here, which is slightly shorter, you can see this line is slightly shorter than the one above it. It just stores the length of the suggestion. We then have these large note block arrows that you can use to select a suggestion. You can press either one. For instance, I'm just gonna go down here and press this arrow. You can use any of the note blocks. They're all looked at by observers. Uh, then the observers sent a signal uh, to unlock that specific shift register. So here it's doing the bottom one. Uh, you'll see that in a few ticks. There it goes. And then the data starts to be se uh, sent along this wire where it goes on a rather long journey all the way to the main typing screen where it is fed into that typing screen. And here's why we needed to store the length of the word. If we unlocked the typing screen for the maximum possible word length of nine characters, then there would just be a random large space between the end of the word and the edge of the screen. It would be something like... It would look something like this, which we don't want. So we need to store how long the word is and only unlock it for, in this case, the length of a five character word. So that's how the suggestions work, but I actually haven't even gone over how the text entering works. Basically, right above the area where the text is sent to the binary chain maker, it's also copied over up here, where it goes into another decoder, uh, this time a smaller one just for the letters, where if it activates, for instance, say this, or actually, let's go with this one because it's easier to see. If it activates this section, it'll activate all of these observers in the shape of an A, which will then send data out onto these three lines, which are then later on merged into one, one after the other, similarly to how this works, but only for one letter at a time and more compact. And then we also have a second version over here that is for uh, lowercase letters, uh, using that sixth bit from the keyboard. Over here, there are uh, torches all along this side, which is for the sixth bit. And on this side, there are repeaters, which means this side will only activate if the capitalization bit is off which means that only one of these sections can be activated at a time. And then, just like the system over there, it is sent to the screen, but just without needing to be shown to the user first. It can just go directly. And we also don't need to store the length, because every single letter here uh, takes up three pixels of space, plus one extra one so the letters aren't right next to each other. That is basically the exact same system that I used for DaxOS v2, which in of itself was basically the exact same system that I used for DaxOS v1, just with the addition of the both capitalized and lowercase sections. As you may have noticed, I've actually done very little real inventing to get the predictive keyboard to work. So that's a relatively good explanation of how this thing works, but here's a couple of extra notes about it. First of all, unfortunately no, suggestions do not give suggestions even if the suggested word can give suggestions. What I mean by that is, if you type the word really, and then click the suggestion for quite, even though quite is actually a known word, as you can see on my document over here, uh, quite is actually a known word, it will not be registered as a uh, known word and it will not give you su the suggestions. So because I haven't really given a full showcase of how this thing works, I'm just gonna go type a basic word so you can see how long the suggestions take to pop up and uh, just a full showcase of how it works. So I'm just gonna type out hello, which is one of the known words, and then I'm gonna go press space and you can see the suggestions being given out. There we go, that's the word, so I can go press space so that the suggestions are given. My game is lagging very heavily, so this is taking a lot longer than it should. Uh, it generally takes like 
5 seconds to give the suggestions. But anyway, they're here now, so I can just use the arrows to uh, select one of them, and then it will be shown over here on the text display.